Namaste. So, yesterday I had a conversation, exchange of messages with one of our viewers. And he reminded me once again <laughs> how most of our viewers don't really understand our philosophy, our point of view, and the reason why that uh, we have these views. So I want to explain a little bit about that today, just so it's clear, hopefully. Okay, we have a system of four views, the Chatur Darshanam. Here's the good old chart <laughs> relating the four views to the chakras and to the different yogas and states of consciousness. So the meaning of this chart is that one begins the spiritual path at the bottom. Dvaita Vada. Everybody starts in Dvaita Vada because everybody starts at the beginning thinking that the world is real and the body is the self. So as long as you think like that, fine, that's okay. You are where you are. Don't pretend to be somewhere else because that won't work. But if you follow the yoga for the Dvaita Vada, which is Karma Yoga, that means performing rituals according to the instructions of the Shastras, the scriptures, and you pick a certain deity, a certain path. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, Shiva or Shakti or Krishna or Buddha or even Jesus or, or Satan or whoever, right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> but you have to have a relationship with a higher power. Why? Because any verbal or conceptual explanation of God, the absolute, is simply a metaphor. It's a metaphor, it's a word picture. That's what a metaphor is. Because the absolute is inconceivable and inexpressible, ineffable is the proper word. Because the absolute is ineffable, it can't be expressed in words. So then wait a minute, why are there all these religions that tend to express the absolute in words? And they say, our scriptures are the only ones that are right and so on like this. And even within a path, like this particular fellow was trying to follow Kriya Yoga, and he was telling me that there are all these different teachers and they all disagree with one another and they all say that they are right. How do I pick one over the other? Well, this is the, <laughs> the normal condition on planet Earth. Everybody has a different view, but everybody thinks they're right. I tell you what, it's just a metaphor. It's like saying, what's your favorite novel or what's your ta favorite TV show? Huh? Well, I like the Avengers. Somebody else likes Star Trek, you know, whatever. You don't get into a fight over it. You just say, oh, yeah, that's cool, right? And it's the same with religion. You pick your religion according to your taste, according to your level of understanding. You find a teacher who speaks to you, who speaks your language and you follow that teaching. You perform the processes, the practices, you do the work, you learn the path, and you do it. And what you're basically doing in Dvaita Vada is offering, giving, making, doing service to God in whatever concept, whatever form, whatever name, it really doesn't matter because it's just a metaphor. <laughs> it's always a metaphor. In the beginning, now, here's what happens. As your karma yoga 
matures and you accrue pious karma, which are the causes of higher wisdom, you internalize whatever metaphor it is that you've been following. And you're, the metaphor that was originally external from some scripture or some teacher or some group or religion or whatever, now becomes an inner thing between you and yourself. You, in other words, transcend the literal external view and you come to assume a metaphorical internal view where the story, the metaphor, the Godhead or the deity or whatever is like a, a picture of your inner state. This is bhakti. And bhakti arises spontaneously. You don't have to try. You don't have to follow anybody. In fact, at this stage, it's very good if you, if you don't follow anybody, that you follow your own internal wisdom. So you keep maybe performing the same activities, but those activities become increasingly internal. Instead of external rituals, you start doing them internally in the mind. This is called manasa puja. Manasa means of the mind and puja means worship. So manasa puja with love, that's what bhakti means, continues for some time. All this can take years, decades even. So don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a rush. Don't try to force anything. Allow everything to develop naturally and it'll be right. Like Lao Tzu said, easy is right. So take it easy. After some time of performing bhakti, internally or externally, huh, what will happen is that meditation begins to arise spontaneously because the internalized metaphor of your god or goddess or path or whatever it is becomes so attractive to the mind uh, it becomes luminous and very pleasurable to contemplate. And so you wind up spending a lot of time just contemplating it. Uh, if you have a mantra, which you should, really, from the beginning, you should have some mantra. At this stage, the mantra becomes like automatic. It chants itself. You don't even have to think about it. It's always going, even when you're asleep and like that. So... This stage of contemplation, this can also last for some time, but this is Raja Yoga. Now you can perform Raja Yoga in a formal external way, huh? which then denigrates it or downgrades it to Karma Yoga. <laughs> or you can perform it in a natural way, which is spontaneous and internal. And this is the actual Raja Yoga. See, people don't understand. They think, they say, I meditate all the time. I meditate every day. Well, how do you meditate? I sit down in lotus posture <laughs> and I do all these mudras and mantras and da 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 da, -da out loud, right? And then I concentrate my mind on such and such a deity or such and such a, a thing, light or sound or whatever. That's not meditation. That is, at best, concentration. Dharana. Dharana means the gradual process of taking the mind away from the senses and directing it internally, ultimately towards consciousness. So, this again, if it's done according to some external instruction, this is karma yoga. But if it arises spontaneously within, then it's raja yoga. See? And when raja yoga matures, which again, could be after a few weeks or a few years or a few decades or a few lifetimes, 
depends on you. That brings the complete self-realization. See, and that can't happen externally. It has to happen internally. And this is known as the grace of God. There's nothing you can do <laughs> to get it or to make it happen. Nothing. It's called anugraha. Anugraha means a blessing, a mercy, a gift. Again, it's a spontaneous thing. It can't be faked. It can't be made to happen by any kind of method. Although people go on trying, I don't know why. Maybe it's because they don't understand this point of view. So, okay, here are the four stages again. Dvaitavada, Vishishta Dvaitavada, Vivartavada, and Ajatavada. And the appropriate yogas for those stages are Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raj Yoga, and Jnana Yoga. And except for the first stage, they all have to arise spontaneously to be authentic. Otherwise, it's just imitation, and you're actually in the lowest stage, the Dvaita Vada. Even though you may have pretensions to being in a higher stage, it's not real. It's just an act. And the, the quicker you admit it to yourself and take a humble position and continue your practices and just wait, uh, be patient. Have the patience of Job, you know? Just wait, and spontaneously, after some time, you'll get the result. You have to trust the process, and you have to trust that this is the real path. Now, why do we teach one path in particular? Well, if you look at the history of this channel, <laughs> and even before this channel, I was a Vaishnava. I was a Hare Krishna for a long time. That was my karma yoga stage. And then that karma yoga bloomed. It ripened into bhakti. And at that point, I detached myself from the organization and I became independent. See, that was my actual bhakti yoga, spontaneous love of God. And then, I went even further and I saw that what I was doing was just following a, you know, a metaphor. <laughs> and the me metaphors are always flawed, by the way. They always have something that doesn't correspond with reality. And so I started seeing this and I detached myself from that metaphor and I went into meditation. I became a Buddhist monk and that's around the time of the beginning of this channel. I was studying the Buddha's teaching, the original suttas, in Sri Lanka. And so I made many videos about my path and my views at that time. And at that time, I was in Raja Yoga, and I was in the Vivartavada stage. And then again, spontaneously, after some time, I said, oh, this isn't it, you know. <laughs> And I moved back to India, and I came to Tiruvannamalai, and I became a student of Ramana Maharshi. And in this stage, I got the initiation from a realized being, my sannyas guru, Jnana Shakti Maharaj. And I also realized it. That's Jnana Yoga. So the seeds for this were planted long time ago, when I was three years old and sitting in the church, you know, and saw the stained glass window of Jesus in the garden, praying to God. And I'm going, he's talking with God, speaking and listening. Hmm. <laughs> that set me up for my whole life's path. So the process, these four stages, is a long process of cultivation and ultimately transcendence 
of whatever stage you're in. Now, if you just switch from being a Christian to being a Hindu, that's not transcendence. Or if, you know, if like uh, the friend who wrote me, if you just switch from one branch of Kriya Yoga to another branch of Kriya Yoga or a different teacher or whatever, or if you uh, become a Buddhist, but you're attached to all the external ceremonies and stuff like that, you see? That's Dvaita Vada. That's religion. That's the metaphor. You're involved with an external system of representation in words and symbols that describes something about the absolute, huh? but certainly can't capture the essence of it because it's ineffable. All right, just keep doing that, whatever it is, develop it to the highest possible stage and it will automatically transform into the next stage. And you'll attain bhakti, and then you'll attain raja yoga, and then you'll attain jnana yoga in time. And it's going to take time. If, it, if it's too quick, it's not the real thing. Don't trust it. Always go back to your fundamentals. Always go back to your root metaphor. And make sure that you are on the path and stay with that path until it ripens and you get the spontaneous realization that transcends the level you're on and lifts you to the next stage. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung.